नमस्कार माई डियर स्टूडेंट्स टूडे इन द क्विक रिव्यू सेक्शन वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट क्लिनिकल स्टेप दैट इज बॉर्डर मोल्डिंग इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ फैब्रिकेशन ऑफ कंप्लीट डेंचर वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग ऑल द टेक्निक्स एंड द क्लिनिकल स्टेप्स डन फॉर द बॉर्डर मोल्डिंग आई विल बी ऑल्सो डिस्कसिंग द इम्पॉर्टेंट क्वेश्चन विच आर आस्क ड्यूरिंग द चेयर साइड वाइवा सो लेट्स बिगिन to start with first we should know what are the other names of border molding they are muscle trimming and peripheral tracing you know this is the favorite question of the examiner during the chair side viva now let us discuss the definition what is border molding border molding is the shaping of the border areas now this is the keyword shaping of the border areas of an impression by functional or manual manipulation of the tissue adjacent to the border to duplicate another keyword duplicate the contour and the size of the vestibule so that is why it is called as the border molding now why we need to do the border molding what is the importance of border molding as we can see in the picture also the oral environment it is surrounded by scores of muscles the facial muscles the muscles of mastication which are active when we speak chew smile swallow or perform any of the daily oral functions and these muscles they can have a destabilizing effect on the denture okay so we do the border molding first to shape the impression borders second it allows the muscles to function in harmony with the denture and because of this it improves the border seal of the denture and thus helps in the retention next comes the materials used for doing the border molding a very common viva question which is asked so the materials are first the modeling compound sticks this is the most common material which we use during our graduation post graduation and in the clinics also second is the polyether third is addition silicon mainly the medium body is used uh, for doing the border molding tissue conditioners for performing the functional border molding autopolymerizing acrylic resin not commonly used impression waxes the mouth temperature waxes they are used to do the border molding mainly used in distal extension partial dentures less commonly used in complete dentures and last is the light cure resin which is used to do the border molding now we come to the methods of doing the border molding there are three methods first is the functional movement which the patient does we guide the patient and he does all the functional movements second is the manual or the digital manipulation that we do and third is the combination of the both functional and the manual so the combination method is most commonly used when we do in our clinics now first are the functional movements these movements when we ask the patient to do it molds a particular area of the uh, impression okay like suppose first is smiling whistling grinning motion it helps to mold the labial borders second is the sucking motion when we ask the patient to do the sucking movement it will help to record the buccal frenum portion and the buccal borders then licking the lips and the other tongue movements that we ask the patient to do it will help in recording the lingual borders then swallowing motion it records the lingual border as well as the floor of the mouth then opening and closing of the mouth with side to side movements it helps to record the distal and the distal buccal borders now next is the digital manipulation or the manual manipulation okay the manual border molding for a particular structure to be recorded we need to do a particular movement so for the first the maxillary border molding first is the labial frenum and the labial fringe we will be able to record by pulling the lip outward downward and inward okay now before the movements i would just request you to go through all the muscle attachments for your ease i have attached the video okay so you can just go through it second is for recording the buccal frenum we need to pull the cheek outward downward and inward forward and backward why this forward and backward because of the three muscles which are, which are attached to the buccal frenum 
the buccinator orbicularis oris and the levator anguli oris. Third is the buccal flange. For recording the buccal flange area, you need to uh, pull the cheek outward, downward and inward just as the thing. Next is the distobuccal flange. For this, you will ask the patient to do uh, move the mandible side to side. Okay, so that the coronoid process, it comes and it records the distobuccal flange. And second is the opening wide of the mouth. Okay, the wide opening. Last is the posterior palatal seal and very important. Okay, we ask the patient to say ah. Then we are able to record the posterior palatal seal. You know, the properly formed posterior palatal seal is one millimeter thick and it is ideally four millimeter wide. We can see in the picture the shape of the PPS which is obtained. Next is the mandibular border molding. For doing the mandibular border molding, we start with the interior. First is the labial frenum and the labial flange. They are recorded by the lower lip movement outward, upward and inward. Okay, so uh, then second is the buccal frenum. Buccal frenum is recorded by moving the cheek outward, upward, inward, along with backward and forward. Okay, third is the buccal flange. Again, the cheek is moved outward, upward and inward. In the maxillary, it was ODI, that is outward, downward, inward. And here it is just the reverse, outward, upward and inward. Next is the distobuccal flange, very important. In this, the patient exerts a closing force, okay, a willfully closing force and the clinician, he applies a downward pressure. Okay, this will record the effect of masseter muscle on the buccinator and it records the masseteric notch in the distobuccal area. Next is the interior lingual flange. So we'll ask the patient first for the protrusion of the tongue. It will determine the length of the flanges. And second, we'll ask the patient to touch the palate with the tongue. It will determine the thickness of the anterior lingual flange. Next is the middle and the posterior part of the lingual flanges. For this, we ask the patient to do side to side movements of the tongue. And second, the protrusion of the tongue. This activates the malohyde muscle and it determines the length and the slope of the lingual flanges. For the details of the muscle attachments, you can just go through the mandibular anatomical landmarks video. I have put the link in the description box. Last is the distal flange. That is to mark the distal border of the impression. First is the protrusion of the tongue. It activates the superior constrictor muscle. Second, Closing of the mouth as the clinician applies the downward pressure. Okay, again the resistance, against resistance, it will record the medial pterygoid muscle on the retromolar curtain. Third is the opening of the mouth, the wide opening. It pulls the pterygomandibular raphe forward and against the lingual side. Now this will determine the distal most border of the bottom molding. Next are the techniques of the manual border molding. The digital or the manual border molding can be performed by two methods. First is the segmental, sectional or the incremental border molding. And second is the single step or the simultaneous border molding. In the first, in this the portions or the sections of the periphery of the tray, they are refined individually, step by step. Okay. And the material of the choice used for the sectional border molding is green stick compound. For the single step or the simultaneous border molding, the entire periphery, okay, whole of the border molding is refined in a single step, okay. The material of choice for the single step is polyether, though addition silicon is also used, but the ideal material of choice is polyether for this. So, let us discuss them one by one. So, first is the incremental or the sectional technique. For this, we use the green stick compound. The steps which are involved are the first is heating. The green stick is softened by heating over a flame. Then it should be warm until it starts to droop, but it should not overheat. Otherwise, it will catch fire or boil. It will char. It will not mold properly. Second is placing. 
the material is placed along the borders of the required segment. Okay, we start with the interior to the posterior. Tempering. Then we temper it in the water bath of 135 to 140 degree Fahrenheit or 57 to 60 degree Celsius for 3 to 5 seconds. That means we are using warm water. First, it will prevent any burns, tempering. Second, why not cold water? Because the green stick will harden in the water itself. So the warm water, it will keep the compound soft for an extended period. Then comes the inserting. Trays inserted in the mouth with the uh, patient seated, head against the headrest, mouth open and relaxed. Then we perform the border molding with the combination of digital and the functional movements. Last is the reheating. It is done by flaming with the alcohol torch which redirects the flame over a particular area. It makes our border molding more controlled and precise. Okay, so once we are satisfied with one section, one increment, we move to the next increment and we perform whole of the border molding with these steps. Next is the single step technique or the simultaneous technique and for this we use polyether. Okay, so the steps involved are first is checking the fit and the extension of the custom tray. Now this is a prerequisite for doing the border molding. Second, place the tray adhesive on the border area throughout. Now this is very important for the polyether we need a tray adhesive. Third, we use 3 inch of base and 2.5 inch of catalyst to extend the working time. You know, we need to do the digital border molding also. So for this, we are just slightly decreasing the catalyst. It should be mixed for 30 to 40 seconds. The next is pour into a 5 ml syringe. Okay, if you have a mixing tip or we can pour it into a 5 ml syringe and then we place the material on the denture border. This will help to place the material in a very precise manner. Then pre-shape the material with a wet finger and place it into the patient's mouth. Inspect the vestibule to ensure that there is sufficient material in all the areas. Okay, there should be no deficient. If there is any deficient area, we can use a wet finger to transfer the material from the adjacent area. Then we perform the manual and the guide for the functional border molding. Once it is set, we remove, inspect for the deficient areas. We can add to the adjacent areas using another mix of polyether. Now, this is the advantage of polyether that it can be added. While it, this is not present in case of the addition silicone. Okay. Next is, for, uh, the other advantage of polyether is that it is hydrophilic. Okay. As compared to the addition silicone. The last is we inspect the border molding critically for the correct borders and then we finalize the border molding. With this we are done with the topic. I'm sure now the step of border molding becomes easy for you. Do not forget to share and like the video with your friends and your juniors. You can give your questions or if you have any topics like this you can give in the comment box. I will try to cover them. Wish you success today and always.